What's up, you fools? Matt, ESC United, your favorite Eurovision channel. Welcome back. This is the ESC United expert panel. Oh, wait, expert panel. I, I forgot about that. I want to make sure we're not experts. We're just one group of people who like to talk about the songs. And we're going to do that. We're going to take apart each country song and then share our thoughts. And at the very end, give you a score. And it is Romania's turn. Make sure if you want to watch all of our videos to subscribe to our channel because you're going to miss out. This is so awesome, etc. Because I'm telling you it is. Anyway, Romania. Romania. Romania missed the finals last year for the very first time. I know we don't want to bring it back every single time, but it is the elephant in the room. So this should never happen again. And Romania is trying to make sure that they're going back to the finals. They brought back their national final system, Selectia Nacionala 2019. And it was a very interesting show. They had a couple of semifinals and then a finals where mostly the... Uh, the juries decided on the winner, and it was a surprise winner, at least according to most, but she won, and that's how it goes, right? It's Ista Pioni and on a Sunday. And now it's time for us to take a look at this, see if we like it or not, and then give our scores. And uh, Lauren, the floor is yours. Um, okay, so when this song um, first came out, we didn't have a lot of Eurovision songs. So for me, it kind of really stood out and I was like, oh, I really enjoy it. But the more and more I listen to it, the more I'm starting to be like, okay, it kind of really doesn't stand out. Um, I do think that she can sing and perform it really well, but I just think it's missing some form of factor um, to make it stand out a bit more. Um, there is a thing when the song starts on the track, it kind of sounds like it's skipping at the beginning, which kind of really bothers me. And every time I always check to make sure my phone's not like paused. <laughs> um, but I think that it's really hard to tell if they will qualify because they are in a very strong competition, and they do have a lot to prove this year. Um, but there's just something for me that this song isn't doing anymore, and I kind of fear for her, but hope that she does pull out something that will surprise everyone. All right. We shall see. We shall see. What do you think, Mr. Roy? Well, um, I honestly think that this is one of the most underrated songs this year. Okay. I think that a lot of people give this as much slack that it gets um, because it didn't, uh, well, it got chosen uh, in the national selection while there were a lot of other favorites. A lot of people were hurt by that maybe or didn't like it. But I feel like if you listen to the song on its own, it is actually quite good. And I love the idea of the staging, like a haunted house. And I think in the video clip, it really makes a good example of how it could be in Tel Aviv. Um, and I really just like the overall vibe of it. it. It's just a song that just goes and goes and goes, but it kind of gets stuck in your head, Loki. Like, we've been recording a few videos now, and this has been stuck in my head for the entire time. And um, I know I'm breaking the fourth wall, but oh well. <laughs> I just uh, am a bit more positive than other people might be about this. Yeah, it has been a little, you know, getting a... Uh, it, a tough situation because there was a lot of controversy around the uh, national final. I personally, I've been doing Eurovision for so long now that I'm used to my favorites not winning. So actually when they win, it's more of a surprise. It's not an expectation on my end. So this doesn't have a personal effect uh, on me as far as like the outcome. As much as sad as I am when my favorites don't go through, I'd be able to look at the song and say what I like or don't like about it. And Romania, to me, everything this year, the song, first of all, Aster, I think it's the strongest part of the song to me because she has a lot of charisma. She's very likable on stage. And she just really adds to the song because in the studio version, I'm not feeling much. It's it's. I think the word average to me just really describes the entire song to me. Um, it doesn't get me excited. It doesn't make me want to turn it off either. It's on. And when it's on, it's great. And when it's over, I'm like, okay, now the next one. So it's really inoffensive, pleasant to me. I I don't necessarily care the whole A, A, A. A part really bothers me the most, and that's kind of where it loses me. But I must say, the staging was fine in the national final. If they can kind of 
capture that vibe that they have in that fairly recently released uh, music video, if they can really put that on display uh, at Eurovision, this could maybe potentially rise in my ranking. And Issa can probably perform the heck out of this one. And I'm hoping for Romain to return as well, because I feel bad if she, after all the controversy then she fails to qualify, makes it even worse on her end, and I don't want that. So I'm a little nervous for Romain. It's going to be a tough road they're going ahead of them, because there's a lot of competition in that semi. But I do see a lot of jury appeal in this one. So um, we have to wait and see. For me right now, it's right there. And um, who is next? Let's go with Melanie. Yes, yes, because I'm on the same page as you, Beth, because, you know, I'm really, if someone tells me, Melanie, you're not going to listen to a talk pop song with a lot of bands, I'm like, this is, going to be my, this is going to be my favorite, you know, I love talk pop. But when I first listened to this song, I'm like, no, I'm not connecting with it, I'm just missing something. But after listening to it four or five times, I'm like, okay, this is a cute, this is a good song, this is good. But you, I really had to listen to it for four or five times before I really have come. That we can appreciate the song, and at Eurovision, you just have one or two times to perform the song. So people have to really um, feel the song in the first time. But it doesn't grab me at the first listen, so that's the problem. So as you said, Matt, the really good thing of the song is Esther because she knows how to sell the song. Because when I saw the national final, that dark all those vibes she's having with her hands and doing, she's no, she knows how to sell the song. But overall, the song is just a song that's good on a Sunday. I'm going to listen to it on a Sunday. It's average. And on a Sunday, on the background, it's okay for me. It's okay. Yeah, I think that it seems... I mean, again, it's not horrible, but it's just right there. I know what you mean. But let's take a look at our scores. Not just our scores, but everyone's scores. First, the four of us. We share from 10 to being awesome, 1 to being not at all awesome, and then see where it in the end lands overall. Yeah. Lauren, what's your score? Um, just with being an average um, song, I am just going to give it a six point today. Um, I'm going to try and give it a break and stop listening to it. So hopefully if I listen to it in two weeks, it'll have more of a wow factor again. But it just isn't doing anything for me right now. All right. Six points from Lauren. Roy. Yeah, um, I'm a bit more positive than that. And, uh, you know, Romania last year, I wasn't into the song at all. And I think a lot of people were with me on that. And then they brought the staging and it really brought them back into competition for me. And it was really just competing to get the final spot into the semifinal. And I can totally see that happening again this year. Um, and so I gave it this a seven. A seven. All right. Yes. As I said to me, it's as of right now, average. And yes, I'm not counting out Romania right now, as a matter of fact. I could easily see Romania qualifying. So this is not about the odds. Just for me right now, it's just not on my radar. I'll give it five points. How about you, Melanie? Yes, as I said, it's just a good song. And I know that uh, Esther will sell it on the stage. She did it in the national final. I think she will, all, uh, will also do it in Tel Aviv. So I give it a six. All right. There you have it. These are the scores from us. But we're only four peoples. And there are 20 plus people out there, and they're all voted on the ESC United team. Let's throw them all together, mix them up, steer them up, and share the overall results. So I'm looking it up here right now. Romania's overall score 6.05. So, Melanie, kind of like where we all are, the four of us, huh? no surprise. It's higher than I thought because I thought it was lower because, yeah, all that um, buzz about the national final, I was thinking that a lot of people still feeling that, yeah, Laura had to win, EZ had to win, and they, yeah, they didn't give, I feel that when Essa won, they didn't give her the chance to really prove her. So I actually, um, I'm surprised that it's still, yeah, it's still six, six points, so I'm surprised of the voting. Yeah, I think that is a very fair and representative. We, I think we do a good, uh, we, the four of us represent like the overall feel of the song that the entire team had. 6.05 is not bad at all. It's actually a pretty good score. If you go over six, you cannot complain. Right? So this is where Romania is at, 6.05. But again, this is just the ESC United score. Now it's your turn. There is a link in the description box to our poll. Vote, vote, vote while you can. You can vote your score from 10 to 1, where you would put it, and then we add it up and then compare the reader's results to the 
ES United results and see where we agree and disagree. You can see each individual uh, score also in below and the entire ranking of all songs that we have uh, reviewed so far. So thank you for watching. Good luck to Romania at Eurovision. And uh, we're moving on. We got more work to do here. So have a good day.